Hi friends, today's story is from Knowledge 2 Lesson 12 called The Great Wall of China. Our first vocabulary word for today's read aloud is defense. Repeat after me, defense. Defense is the act of providing protection or guarding against an attack. Our second vocabulary word is intervals. Say intervals. Intervals are spaces between two or more objects or moments in time. Our last vocabulary word is transport. Say transport. Transport means to carry or move from one place to another. People have been building walls all over the world for many thousands of years. There are walls that hold up the roof of your house, walls that form the exterior of your school, and walls that make up the many buildings you see throughout the day. Some walls, however, are very special and are known all over the world. Let's take a look at a few famous ones. This one, called Hadrian's Wall, was built in Great Britain and extended from one side of the country to the other. Originally built to keep enemies out, today this wall serves as a friendly guidepost to many hikers touring the English countryside. This wall is called the Western Wall by Jewish people today and it is used as a sacred prayer wall. The wall is the only remaining support wall that was part of an ancient temple in Jerusalem. And this wall, the Great Wall of China, is probably the world's most famous wall of all. It snakes along over 4,000 miles of land in northern China. Like Hadrian's Wall, the Great Wall of China was built to keep enemies out. The story of this Great Wall begins in the cold, dry lands north of the Yangtze and Yellow Rivers. You see, China is one of the largest countries in the world, and its borders span or cover a great amount of land. The land across this vast territory can be very, very different. Some areas, like the river valleys of the Yellow and Yangtze rivers you've already learned about, are very fertile. In other areas, like the land far north of these rivers, it's very cold and dry, and almost no crops grow there. The people who lived in the cold, dry north had to make their living in other ways. Long ago, in these cold northern lands beyond the boundaries of China, a group of nomads lived by raising animals. They rode on horses herding sheep and goats from place to place in search of grass for grazing. Life was very hard for these nomadic people who lived in the north of China. Perhaps that is why they became such fierce warriors. These northern nomads regularly crossed over the boundary into China on horseback, stealing food, gold, and animals. The Chinese thought of many ways to keep the attackers out. All along the northern border of China, the Chinese built walls of earth, stone, and wood. The materials they used depended upon what was readily available in the areas where they lived. For hundreds of years, the Chinese built many separate walls to keep out northern invaders. But it was not until the rule of China's first emperor, Qin Shi Huang, that the decision was made to connect the many walls together into one long wall, the Great Wall, for added protection. This was over 2,000 years ago. Work continued on the Great Wall for another 1,500 years. Soldiers, prisoners, and peasants struggled to obey the orders of each new and powerful emperor of China who wanted to finish the wall. It was not an easy task or job. The wall stretched out across the land like a giant dragon, often built on the highest ground like mountain ridges to make it even more difficult for invaders to cross. Donkeys and goats were sometimes used to transport or carry building materials, but people did most of the work. With baskets slung over their backs or balanced on poles across their shoulders, they worked from sunrise to sunset, building and repairing the wall. The work was very dangerous, and many workers died in the process. Spanning 4,000 miles across the northern China, the Great Wall was built to act like a fort. At intervals along the way, watchtowers were erected or built on the wall. At one time, there were nearly 25,000 watchtowers. Supplies were stored inside these tall spires, bows, arrows, cooking tools, and medicines. Soldiers posted atop the lookout towers, kept watch for invading warriors. If they sensed danger, they used flags and drums to send signals from tower to tower. At night, Fires along the wall alerted Chinese soldiers of possible enemy attack. Beneath the towers, soldiers who were camped in tents also watched for signals, ready to come to the defense of the wall. 
and all the people behind it at any moment's notice. New roads were continually built to reach the wall. Every day, Chinese people from near and far moved closer to the construction in order to provide soldiers and workers with their everyday needs. Some grew crops and cooked food for the soldiers and workers, whereas others made their tools and their clothing. Irrigation canals were dug to supply everyone with water. For many years, people slaved to fulfill the Qin Emperor's dream of one continuous wall. The building of the wall was a project that lasted over many lifetimes, passing from one generation to the next. It was an enormously long and difficult project. With all of that hard work, do you think the Great Wall protected the Chinese as planned? Yes, it did, for much of the Chinese history at least. There were times, however, when some determined warriors broke through the wall. On two occasions, lasting for hundreds of years each, nomads from Central Asia forced the Chinese people to live under their harsh or difficult and cruel rule. Today, the Great Wall is no longer used as a means of protection. Rather, it's become a tourist attraction. People come from all over the world to see it, walk on it, and learn more about it. It is truly a wonder of the world. Parts of the Great Wall have crumbled, but there are still many parts of it where you can walk along the same bricks and stones as the soldiers of long ago. Some people even pay money to sleep in the watchtowers. One day, that could be you.